Let's go take a look at the Lord's mountain in Genesis 22, 14 through 17. This is incredible. This is where Abraham is about to offer up Isaac. Abraham calls the name of that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the Lord's mountain it will be provided. So the Lord's mountain says, who are you, O great mountain? And it says, the angel of the Lord calls to Abraham a second time out of the sky. And he says, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and you have not withheld your son, your only son, that I will bless you greatly. I will multiply your seed greatly like the stars of the heavens, like the sand which is on the seashore. Your seed will possess the gate of his enemies. Now, I want to show you something. Let's, we're going to do the PowerPoints here for a little bit. Here is two verses within those verses. This is verse 15 and 16, where it says, And the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven the second time. And he said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. And what do we know about God the Father? He did not withhold his son, his only son, in having his life sacrificed for you. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit, a minute here, about the odds of something happen. And we're going to look at intelligence. Okay, here is those like word puzzles. How many of you have ever done word puzzles? Now look at this. Here is a sentence. This is from Proverbs. Who hath ascended up into heaven, you know, or descended? Who, you following me? This is a sentence. Now it takes one person, it takes some intelligence to write a sentence, to put letters and words together. And then from that, you try to see, okay, what are the words that I can find? And you can see the word like bird and head and raw, sea. But none of those have anything to do with the text. Are you following me? That's just random. That is just chance. There's no design. There's a design in the puzzle, but there's no design. It's just random what can be found. There's another way of doing a puzzle like this. You can have animals and you can position the words for animals and then you just throw a bunch of letters around them right all right so again you have some intelligence in putting words and then scrambling letters but how much more intelligence is there if you can have spoken text written down and every word has to do with the text that you find now that's incredible i mean that that requires some definite high intelligence. Here is that word. Here it is in English with the transliteration and the Hebrew. Verse 15 and 16, if you start right here, like car and said, okay, and uh, Amalak, the angel, you know, Yudhe Bafe of the Lord, uh, you know, to Abraham, so uh, right there you can see all that that's all this is hebrew which is right to left goes here 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 so i have this text in hebrew word for word and right here in the center section is that says and said by myself have i sworn says the lord okay that's coming right across here you can see yud he says the lord that's how it ends so that is the hebrew now one more thing i want to point out if you remember from last week Hashem, the He Shen Mem, that's the H S H M, is the name. He is the word the, Shem is name. Does everyone get that? And everyone can visualize those three letters in Hebrew. I found out something that I had never seen before till just the other day, and it's mind blowing, and I want to show you something. But first, you, you, wait till you see this. Now, what is the name? Hashem. Within this text, God wants everyone to know the name. So here, within this text, coming down, you have Hashem, 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 Hashem. Okay? But now, I want you to see something else. Right there, the yud heh vav 
Okay? Yud hey vav hey. Now remember the phrase God said unto Moses, a yeah, I share a yeah, I am that I am. Right here is a yeah. So you have the Lord's name, the Yud hey vav hey. A yeah, Hashem. All of that is right there within the text. That's the name of the Yud Hey Vav Hey. A yeah, I am, I am. I will be who I will be. Now, what's amazing is X marks the spot, right? And there's Yeshua's name. Right there is Yeshua's name in the middle of the text. Now, what is the word for name? No, just name, just name. Shem. If you add the Yud on the end, Shemi, it's my name. Right there is my name is Yeshua. And the Yud is part of Yeshua's name and is part of my name. There's more. Okay. See, there's the Yud Hevav Hey. You, I believe Yeshua is the Yud Hevav Hey. It's all connected. Okay, so now. Here is the word behold, as in behold the lamb. So right there you have Yeshua, behold, or behold Yeshua. There's more. This is the word for sheep or lamb, okay? The shin, hey. And remember, Yom Kippur is on the 10th day, and what's amazing, you see the word for lamb 10 times in the text, okay? Right there, tied to Yeshua. He is the lamb. Okay? Here, 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 here. Okay? The word lamb, the lamb of God. Now, there's still more. Okay, remember, here's Yeshua coming down. Oh, what a time for my laser to quit. Oh, oh there it is. Yeshua. A uh, yeah. Okay? Look at this. This here is Echad. And there is Lamb. So we have Yeshua, the I am, who is the Lamb, and he is one. Yeshua is the I am, and he is the one Lamb. As Isaac was so glad there was a ram or a lamb that was offered up in his place in this text. There's more. Let's look at this whole thing here, this whole entire line. Now, get a load of this. You can go to Google Translate, and you put it the word river, and you have the shin, the mem, the noon, the hay, and the resh. So we also have, he is the one lamb who came out of the river, Jordan. And what did he say? Behold, Yeshua, the lamb. Right there. That's what you have. A cod, behold, the lamb. And here's the word for river. Okay, we're just starting. Look at this, Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of armies. And who are you, O great mountain? Right? And before Zerubbabel, you'll become level. He will let all see the headstone, the cornerstone. Who's the cornerstone? With cries of grace, grace to it. And who is that great mountain? Okay, do you know what? This verse, the sages, the Jewish rabbis from ages ago, talking about this verse, about this great mountain, this is what they said. There's a messianic reference to be found in the rabbinical source called Yalkut which comments about the one who becomes the great mountain, explaining the phrase, who art thou, O great mountain? They say this refers to King Messiah. And why does he call him the great mountain? Because he's greater than the patriarchs. As it is said, my servant shall be high and lifted up and lofty exceedingly. He will be higher than Abraham, lifted up above Moses, loftier than the ministering angels. So they see the Messiah is higher than Abraham, higher than Moses. He is this great mountain, this King Messiah. Now, do you remember who and Moses wrote and he said, there's a prophet that is coming that you're going to be listening to. And he's like who? Me. 
there's a prophet like unto Moses that is coming, correct? But we also see this person who's coming is to be higher than Moses. It's not, he's not lower than Moses to be like Moses. Moses is like him. You following me? So who is that prophet that was to come that is higher than Moses that is patterned after, or Moses is patterned after him? Well, do you remember the name of God? Hashem, 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 Hashem. This is what the Lord showed me just this morning. What is Hashem backwards? Yeshua, but it's Moshe, Moshe, Moshe. <laughs> Moses is likened unto Hashem, and Hashem is the one who's coming, showing Yeshua is Hashem. He is the one that's likened unto Moses because that's his name backwards. Just like in a mirror, you see a reflection. Moses was likened unto Hashem. And Yeshua, who's in the center, he is the one who is Hashem that Moses was patterned after. That is the name that is higher above than any name. Right there, Yeshua. You have Hashem and Moshe connected. Now, look at this. There's more still. Exodus 29, 7 talks about, you shall take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. That word is shemen, the sheen, the mem, and the noon, the S-H-M-N sound. But look how else that word is translated. In Ezekiel 34, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains, har, the hay race is mountains, har, of Israel, shall their fold be, and they shall lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon, again, the mountains and the har of Israel. Remember Bahar, the other Torah portion, on the mount, how, Har means mount? Well, I want you to see that Shemin is not, it also is the fat, the oily. It means robust, the strongest, the mighty, powerful, right? Well, that same phrase that we just looked at about the river, it can also be divided up as the one lamb that's anointed on the mountain. Akkad is one. Say is lamb, Shemin is uh, anointing, Har is mountain. It can be looked as river, it can be seen as this. So there's a lot of different ways that you can look at this. All this is within this text in Hebrew. I mean, to me, this shows you the hand of God in the design. 